Details of the reign of King Hezekiah appear in three places in Scripture, in 2 Kings, in 2 Chronicles, and in the book of Isaiah. And they have different emphases. The thing that the writer to Chronicles is emphasising is, first of all, the repentance of the nation, the way that Hezekiah, when he became king, began by turning the hearts of the people back to the Lord, having the temple cleansed, getting the priests and Levites back to their duties, and then calling the people themselves to a Passover so that they could participate and join in with the revival that took place. Consequently, the people destroyed the images to false gods and rejoiced in the Lord. And Hezekiah himself continued to encourage the people, teaching the people the words of the Lord. Whenever a person turns to the Lord, though, they will be tested. And when a nation turns to the Lord, that nation will also be tested. At the time that Hezekiah was turning back to the Lord, Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, was raiding all the countries and overrunning them. He had overrun the northern kingdom, Israel, and taken many of the people into captivity and overrun many other nations. And he thought to do the same with Judah. Second Chronicles chapter 32 After these deeds of faithfulness, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered Judah. He encamped against the fortified cities, thinking to win them over to himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come, and that his purpose was to make war against Jerusalem, he consulted with his leaders and commanders to stop the water from the springs which were outside the city. And they helped him. Thus many people gathered together who stopped all the springs and the brook that ran through the land, saying, Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? And he strengthened himself, built up all the wall that was broken, raised it up to the towers, and built another wall outside. Also he repaired the Milo in the city of David, and made weapons and shields in abundance. Then he set military captains over the people, gathered them together to him in the open square of the city gate, and gave them encouragement, saying, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed before the king of Assyria, nor before all the multitude that is with him, for there are more with us than with him. With him is the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God, to help us and to fight our battles. And the people were strengthened by the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. After this, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, sent his servants to Jerusalem, but he and all the forces with him laid siege against Lachish. To Hezekiah, king of Judah, and to all Judah who were in Jerusalem, saying, Thus says Sennacherib, king of Assyria, In what do you trust, that you remain under siege in Jerusalem? Does not Hezekiah persuade you to give yourselves over to die by famine and by thirst, saying, The Lord our God will deliver us from the hand of the king of Assyria. Has not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places and his altars, and commanded Judah and Jerusalem, saying, You shall worship before one altar, and burn incense on it? Do you not know what I and my fathers have done to all the peoples of other lands? Were the gods of the nations of those lands in any way able to deliver their lands out of my hand? Who was there among all the gods of those nations that my fathers utterly destroyed that could deliver his people from my hand, that your God should be able to deliver you from my hand? Now therefore do not let Hezekiah deceive you or persuade you like this, and do not believe him, for no God of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people from my hand or the hand of my fathers. How much less will your God deliver you from my hand? Furthermore, his servants spoke against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. 
He also wrote letters to revile the Lord God of Israel and to speak against him, saying, As the gods of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people from my hand, so the God of Hezekiah will not deliver his people from my hand. Then they called out with a loud voice in Hebrew to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall to frighten them and trouble them that they might take the city. And they spoke against the God of Israel as against the gods of the people of the earth, the work of men's hands. Now because of this, King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos prayed and cried out to heaven. Then the Lord sent an angel who cut down every mighty man of valour, leader and captain in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned shamefaced to his own land, and when he had gone into the temple of his God, some of his own offspring struck him down with the sword there. Thus the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all others and guided them on every side. And many brought gifts to the Lord at Jerusalem, and presents to Hezekiah king of Judah, so that he was exalted in the sight of all nations thereafter. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we reflect on Second Chronicles chapter 32, verses 1 to 23, and see the test that came upon the nation. And it was a fearful test. For it was true that Assyria had overrun many nations, including the northern kingdom, the kingdom of Israel, that none of the false gods who were worshipped, whoever they were, could deliver, because false gods are no gods at all. They are the construction of men's hands, coming out of men's minds. But the Lord God created man in his own image. He has power to do whatever he chooses in this world. He had raised up Sennacherib to punish the nations for their idolatry and he would deliver Judah because they worship him. Because Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, he encouraged his people to trust in the Lord. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed before the king of Assyria, nor before all the multitude that is with him, For there are more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. They knew that in the past God had delivered them from mighty enemies when they trusted him. But they also needed to resist the enemy. And this they did by blocking up the water supply so that if Sennacherib came to besiege Jerusalem, They would not have water to maintain a long siege. Hezekiah also famously built a tunnel to bring water into the city, as well as lifting the height of the wall and building a second wall around the city. The king of Assyria does not take on Jerusalem itself, but writing to the people and sending messengers to the people, mocking the God of heaven and saying he has no more power than any of the false gods. In fact, accusing Hezekiah of rebelling against God by destroying all the high places throughout the land. You have no strength to resist me, and your God cannot help you. Submit or die. Your God cannot deliver you from my hand. This is spoken in Hebrew to the people on the wall. More details are given in the book of Isaiah, but here we just have the conclusion of the matter. Hezekiah prayed. He sent the letters to Isaiah and asked him to pray. And the Lord responded, saying, Sennacherib would not shoot an arrow there. While they were encamped at Lachish, the angel of the Lord killed 185,000 of the Assyrian army in one night. Sennacherib returned home, where he worshipped his gods, and two of his sons killed him while he was doing so. And so that was the end of the expansion of the Assyrian Empire. And because Hezekiah had stood up to him, and the God of Israel had defended Israel, the nations recognised Hezekiah as a great king, and brought him presents. The wrath of the Lord did not come upon Judah during the days of Hezekiah.